In July of 2021, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Coming back home every day that junior year of high school felt like a roll of the dice. Would he be feeling okay or in pain? It took a huge spiritual and emotional toll on me and my family. The chemo was just too much to bear. He fought valiantly for months, but passed on April 5th, 2022. He was, and still is, my hero. Here I am, two years later, looking for answers. Not just asking God why the closest one to me is gone, because that is something we all may ask ourselves. In this documentary, I go on a short escapade, searching for wisdom from people who have risen from their earthly morning to their role in the kingdom of God. I flew to Indiana to learn about this tragic yet impactful story. My name is Stacy, and I'm from a little town in the middle of nowhere in Indiana. My faith over the course of my life, I, I was born and raised in church, and I grew up kind of thinking of God as some big mean principle, so to speak, that was just waiting for me to mess up, and then he was going to conk me over the head. At the time of the tragedy that happened in my life, I felt like I was doing okay, but I really didn't know God the way I know him now. I had three children, and my oldest was kind of a spitfire from day one. From, you know, came out in the delivery room smiling and raring to go and um, never slowed down. He was killed in an automobile accident, a head-on collision with a semi, and he was 31 years old. It's really hard. As a mom, you don't expect to lose your child. You don't think you're going to have to go into his house and look for clothes to put on him in his casket that you picked out. And um, it, it's hard. And I was just kind of going through the motions in a trance almost. You know, to make matters a little bit more confusing, losing your child so quickly, he had struggled in his life with drug addiction. He was working and trying to overcome that addiction and told me that with God's help, he was doing it and I believed him, but then when he died, I thought, was he really, you know, was, he, was it good enough to get him into heaven? Was, was he still using? Did that exclude him from going to heaven? And, you know, the God I had always served was more of a dictator than a loving father. That night, we were sitting around just tired. We were so exhausted from the day, and my daughter said, Mom, give me your phone. I want to uh, answer all the messages people have been sending you because I couldn't. It was all I could do to breathe, um, just to make it through a day. And she took my phone and I heard her gasp. And I said, what, what's, go what's going on? And she said, how could you have just gotten a message that came in your phone from Monty? And Monty's the name of my son who died. I said, I don't know, let me see what's it say. And she handed me my phone and the message that came through said, you sleep well, Mama. I work for Jesus Christ now. God gave me that message at exactly the time in my life when I needed it the most. I couldn't even pray. If I tried to pray, all I could do was cry and no words would come out. But the Bible says that God even understands and the Holy Spirit tells God what you're trying to say. and. So even when I had no words, I have no doubt that God was listening to my heart and knew what I was saying. There is hope. There is hope of seeing your loved one again someday. And it doesn't have to be the end. It's, it's really not the end. It's a new beginning for those that know Jesus. So if you're in that, it's gonna be a roller coaster. It's gonna be up and down. You're gonna think you're doing good and then a wave is gonna come in and just knock you off your feet that you didn't even see coming but it'll get better. You're gonna have more time in between those terrible waves eventually until it's just a, a very occasional thing. And, you know, I, I'd rather have that kind of love for somebody that hurts so bad when they're gone than to never have loved them at all.
Through my journey, I found out that the death of a loved one is not the only loss that can strengthen someone's spiritual walk with God. I traveled to Venice, Florida to learn more about this humbling experience. My name is Doug. My faith has always been strong, so I grew up in a Christian home in northern Minnesota. I, I learned growing up, though, that um, my faith wasn't really solid and rooted. It, was, it wasn't really who I was. It was just part of my life. God blessed me with a really neat job in the sports apparel industry for almost two decades. And I had the opportunity to work with some real high-level people, professional football teams, Major League Baseball organizations, NBA, and really enjoyed it. Got to meet some terrific people that I stay in touch with to this day. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but that job uh, was my idol. And God turned that around after COVID, uh, the march of COVID, and my job of 20 some years went away. I know that um, his ways are not our ways. <laughs> and I um, had a lot of godly friends that shared with me some real deep insights. One of them was a uh, Pastor Tony Evans book called Detours. And that was a life-changing book to me. I've reread it multiple times on the life of Joseph and how it appeared through Joseph's life as his, his own family sold him into slavery and he was in this pit and then he was imprisoned. And God was with him through each of those things. And I knew that, that God was with me in everything I was doing, but it was just such a contrast from the, the, the familiar life that we'd had for those 20 years where I worked remotely and everything was kind of cookie cutter. And when you've, when you've done something for multiple decades like that, you just kind of get used to it. So it was, it was just a real shift in how my daily life would look, but my faith journey didn't waver. It, it really became stronger because it showed me really what I was relying on. But to really rest in him and know that every single thing that comes in and out of my life has filtered through his hands first. And what I really learned was that God is in so sovereign control of all things, not me. I tended to be someone that wanted to try to control situations and, and leading different people or former colleagues. And uh, I realized that ultimately he's in control, not me. And I want to be a, a faithful steward of what he's given me. My final destination was Largo, Florida, where I encountered an example of enduring, steadfast faith through loss trauma, and a near-death experience. My name is Diana. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior at the age of seven at a Good News Bible study. Then I understood at a young age that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but that God loved us, that he sent his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So I accepted Jesus as my Savior at a young age, attended a Bible-believing church, went to a Christian school. So my faith was very strong. I was a nursing professor prior to that. I was the chief flight nurse for a critical care air ambulance for many years. And I worked in all areas of critical care as a nurse. On August 31st, 2002, upon landing in Lexington, Kentucky in a Learjet, I was transporting a patient back there. We lost all hydraulics and all brakes. Upon landing, we went off the end of the runway over 300 miles an hour off a 60-foot cliff. We were on the other side of a six-lane highway on fire. And my patient was killed immediately. The impact of the crash took my lower legs and jammed them up behind my upper leg bones, your femur, and so my toes were totally turned around. It destroyed my popliteal arteries, it ruptured them, so I was hemorrhaging, I broke my back, and um, we were trapped. And in all of my own strength, I tried to stand up. All I had to do was open the, the exit door to get out, and I couldn't stand, because again, there was no connection between my lower and upper leg bones. And in that moment, it's like the Holy Spirit said, cry out, you know, what else could I do? That's when my faith became real, because I cried out to God, I said, dear God, 
in Jesus' name, please save us. Dear God, in Jesus' name, please save us. And at that moment, my captain, who was unconscious, said he felt somebody shaking him, saying, open the door, open the door, until he crawled back, couldn't see me because of the smoke, opened the door and fell out. And then bystanders started pulling us out. They pulled my patient, her husband, um, and then they, they pulled me out. And finally, somebody was able to pull my co-pilot out. But there was just many miracles in this one huge miracle. God heard my cry and he answered my cry and he saved my life. I underwent 13 hours of surgery. They almost lost me three different times because I had lost all my circulating blood volume. And I went through many complications, lung complications, kidney failure, I bled out. And as a critical care nurse, I know that any one of those complications has a high mortality rate and what we call multi-system organ failure, which is what I had, has an 85 to 90% mortality rate. But God had plans for me and he spared me and he saved me. Doctors just continue to say, there's no earthly reason for your comeback. And that's the truth. It's all God. People ask me, weren't you angry? Didn't you want to know like, why did God allow that to happen to you? And I'm like, no, I didn't because I know that this is an imperfect world. Oftentimes bad things happen to good people. And so I was just amazed that when I cried out, God heard me and I was so grateful for that. God doesn't sit up there and go, oh, you're getting cancer and you're getting a plane crash and this is gonna happen to you. It happens because this world has fallen. But God is there and he says, I can make all things work to the good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Even the pain that I went through, he changed my trajectory. I was a critical care nurse. After that, he changed and he, I got a full scholarship. I finished my master's. I became a professor and I was able to teach and I was able to empower young students to go do what I did. That wasn't even on my radar. And so I would just encourage people, when you're going through a hard time, just reach out and say, God, if you are real, show me. And then take a bold step, walk into a Bible-believing church and just sit there on a Sunday. And when you look around and you're like, what is it these people have? They have an unexplainable joy. I had joy in the midst of trials. I had joy in the midst of pain. That all, that's, that's unnatural. The only explanation could be because of the power of the Holy Spirit living within me. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen.